And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have some returning good brothers to the temple. Coming to us straight from the realm of Drop Dead Studios, we have Good Brother Horus and Good Brother Squid. <sighs> how you how you two doing tonight? <sighs> hungry, but I am doing quite well otherwise. Better to be hungry than hangry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good myself. I've been having a good run on Elden Ring today. and just having a good time. Oh. Yes. As, an aside, as an aside, when it comes to Elden Ring, I have to wonder if Miyazaki was look, was um, taking some notes from Infernal Plus's um, Dark Souls but Cursed mod, <laughs> given, some, given some of the changes that were made, mm. especially when it comes to whips. True. I don't I've know if you people did some crazy stuff with whips recently. Wouldn't be the first time that a joke mod has ended up inspiring a major game mechanic. No, um, I'll, I'm just gonna say if um if 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 there if there is a joke difficulty in Halo Infinite that's inspired by Cursed Halo, I called it. Or if they or if they put in as if they put in as an add-on the D20 grenade. Man, the D twenty grenade was great. Now, but what, anyway, no, what was re what was really great was the blunderbuss. <laughs> I mean, that was basically just a CE shotgun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so so one might ask, what the hell is going on? Well, after the last interview regarding spheres of guile and ultimate engineering that we di that we did. I pitched the idea of taking the of taking the spheres system and seeing how the esteemed members of of this merry band would handle certain characters throughout fi throughout fiction. And because and through that I ended up asking some of the esteemed members of my temple what characters to go with. And some some of the one some of the ones I kept, some of the ones I dropped, some of the ones I put an asterisk on, but I did come up with a list. Mm -hmm. And we'll be going through we'll be going through we'll be going through some of them in the in this, especially since I know you guys like crazy ass builds. And for the first one, I the first one that I have on the list is Accelerator from a certain scientific railgun. I have not seen that anime, so so I am his, just control effing his abilities now. Yeah. <laughs> Putting aside the fact that on A there was the running meme for for, for a while of who can beat Accelerator. Mm -hmm. His whole thing is vector control. Being a, being able to change being able to change the vectors of an, of anything in motion. Um. This can this can range from re this can range from redirecting, redirecting um, objects in motion to, re to redirecting um out to redirecting elements, as well as a as well as a um a combat style that is very much built on calculations when it comes to those vectors. Um, are you asking mainly to um? Go up for the like the skill side th side of things, or to focus more on the magic side of things for this. I think because I've got ideas for both. Um, I'd say a, I'd say a little of column A and a little of column B. So, yeah, the first thing that comes to my mind for replicating um, vector manipulation in terms of abilities would be. Mainly the destruction and telekinesis spheres. I built a villain based on another, uh, another like super villain character from a web series, um, who had a similar gimmick with their abilities. And what I mainly did was using um, a lot of the battle, um, a lot of the redirection and forced movement abilities from the destruction sphere. Things like battering blast or air blast or vacuum blast. Mm -hmm. 
Um, very much things that were designed to launch enemies around the field. Um, uh, as for telekinesis, you can definitely do more complex things with this. For example, you could um, take the um, take a, the counterspell feat alongside the um, what's it called? What's it called? I believe it's dominant counterspell, which allowed you to um, effectively once um, take t take telekinetic control over spell effects and then m move them around the battlefield as you please. Mm -hmm. um, linear Acceleration is another telekinesis talent that is absolutely like in the style of the character alongside Push, Crush, and some of the, um, and especially Kinetic Field with a lot of its expansions, mm -hmm. being able to just like redirect anything that passed through a specific area. Yep. As, oh, as for the like side of things that's focused on analyzing the battlefield and coming up with strategies around it. I'd say that is the cornerstone of the study sphere. Um, a lot of the, um, the study sphere's key ability is survey environment, which allows it to essentially like make a knowledge check about like what's um, around it, either like knowledge nature if you're in some sort of wilderness or knowledge dungeoneering if you're in an underground or engineering if you're inside a building and then utilize that in a way that gives you some advantage. For example, like you can improvise cover or you can use it to like effectively extend the range of an attack or you can use it to like get out of the way of specific hazards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so if I were building that character, I would probably go for the mixture of destruction, telekinesis and the study sphere. Um, Class-wise, I think that'd be immaterial, but my th personal thought is uh, telekinesis focus symbiote. Oh. Yeah. You could potentially even go the whole nine routes and just go uh, Vector at that point. Yeah. Um, Vector is exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can easily like tack on a couple of guile talents here. Or, sorry, skill talents here and mm -hmm. there. Um, yeah, I call them guile talents too sometimes, yeah. but that's the Working thing names. with uh, skill talents that they're very easy to integrate into effectively any character. We designed them so that pretty much anyone would be able to easily dip into them and get a variety of skill-based abilities that add on top of whatever class they're using. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Which I'm very... Very happy we hit the the stretch for the champion content because oh, without boy. like without having that 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 build there just became significantly harder to do with just got uh, skill talents on the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking as the guy who is working on a lot of the stuff for the cha um, for the champion book, including a new class, I'm very happy that that came out as well, and I've got so many things I'm ready to share. So, next is Zangetsu in Bloodstained. Oh, I know this one. Um, now for now, um, because of the fact that he has wildly different kit in Ritual of the Night compared to the Curse of the Moon games, um, I'd like to, if at all possible, I'd like to kind of go with kind of go with some sort of midway point between the between the two kits because obviously. His appearance in Ritual of the Night is, it and in and in Curse of the Moon are going to be completely different play styles, and thus completely mm -hmm. different kits. Yeah. Well, I've played. I have a hundred percent Ritual of the Night, so mm -hmm. I think I can help with that. Uh, Zangetsu is. Um, most of his fighting style is based around one, um, either elemental augmentation or enhanced mobility. Mm -hmm. And basically, he has a huge sword, but he's most dangerous when he's either teleporting around the field or making his sword explode with a whole bunch of different properties. Um, for me, that combination screams um, an enhancement-focused caster of some sort, most likely the Whitesmith Armorist. Um, 
Whitesmith Armorist with Elemental Enhancement and the Martial Armorist archetype heavily focused on the Athletic Sphere. Because with that, you can replicate a lot of his most iconic moves that range from it's like just teleporting through an opponent and leaving a trail of fire behind you. You can do that with Spring Attack, um, the Spring Attack analog, which has a feat to augment it with casting. Um, a lot of the explosive um, weapon attacks you can do with the Enhancement Sphere. And a lot of his kind of ridiculous movement that you can do in the Zangetsu playthrough, like repeatedly spamming his uppercut to fly. Mm -hmm. High-level Athletic Spheres users and, or alternatively, low le mid-level Telekinesis Sphere users are capable of pulling that off to an excellent degree. Um, the only, so, th the only a, tricky part so, would be, would be the, the fact that he's supposedly cursed, but as far as how that curse works, it's never really gone into. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot of ways. Um, the Witchmark drawback, or any number of oracle, cur um, any number of oracle curses. Um, heck, you could just you could up, like, if it restricts his actions in some way, you could potentially go with the Inviolate Oath, um, and maybe tie that to his powers in some um, in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So I think the big question here, though, is how can we, you know, use skill talents here to help. Um, replicate this build. Ooh, and skill talents ask, in particular. That's I think, interesting. I think spell hacking might be the wave. Maybe mm -hmm. opening up. Uh, I, I believe we've gotten some content in there now that is basically like hacking out magic items. Uh, that might help with some of his elemental attacks, perhaps. I admit I'm not super well versed on where spell hacking is right now because mm -hmm. it's gone under a lot of revisions. Oh boy, it really has. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can go with I can go with that. Um, next is probably the most metal entry in the in this project, that being Eddie Riggs from Brutal Legend. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, so performance here for sure. So on one you. hand, you have the separator, the a the axe. Mm -hmm. On the on the other hand, you have Clem you have his guitar Clementine yeah. which is able to do pyro pyrotechnics but every time it does the the thing gets hot mhm mm um and during stage battles you have him get you have him getting demon wings yeah and of course there's also the matter to consider of being able to command an army of headbangers to do your bidding mhm mm uh, um the action sphere I'm just saying yeah Oh, that might form more under leadership, actually. Yeah, faction sphere to represent like his army's resources is definitely a good point. But I think my partners here were right on the money with the performance sphere. Um, it has a lot of abilities that absolutely play into the fantasy of being a utterly ridiculous badass musician and using your music as a powerful tool in combat. Um in particular, the instrumental um, package it, um, would be particularly effective because it does kind of mirror the game mechanics where wherever Eddie is, he's able to provide a lot of buffs to those nearby and encourages a lot of movement around the field in order to essentially tactically be in the best place possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As for the Axe and Clementine, uh, I do think like some sort of champion class is in order, so the character would likely be someone who uses both magic spheres, combat spheres, and skill spheres all in similar capacities. So I think that... Um, I think that like Hedge, Hedge Witch would definitely be a good contender. Bard is certainly workable, but... Um, Given his association with um, artifacts, I think a skill um, there's a skill focused occultist archetype that is being worked on in the champions book that I think would be absolutely perfect for Eddie. Especially since Bard is just a little bit too obvious, and there are certain Bard habits that don't fit. Yeah, hot take. Mm -hmm. Put him in Scald. Legit, legit. Scald, I think, has a better chance. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, Scald is just barred without all of the barred baggage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I usually I have mean, people how play. It? I usually have people play Scald anyways when they want to be a bard. Yeah. I mean, hell, with Eddie, you could arguably make a, um, you could arguably make a um, war priest with him, because um, like a lot of his support abilities do kind of sync up with the war priest stuff, and also, <laughs> I just always think of Ozzy Osbourne yelling the "Plays the fucking gods, man!" <laughs> line <laughs> from the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Since. I have I have a few e I have a few disciples of Ega in in my temple, so this is it. So we're dipping into that for this next one. Um, Adrian Fahrenheit's Tepes, aka Alucard. And I have to make I have to clarify we're dealing with the Castlevania Alucard, not the Helsing Alucard. Okay. That um, are we talking more about the, more? Is this more the video games or the anime? I'm leaning more towards um, the vi more towards the vi more towards the video games. Um, with the with the assumption that he has the that he has the kit that you get right that you got right out of the gate before it got stolen by death. Mm -hmm. So his his heirloom his heirloom sword and shield as well as. The abil as well as the vampire abilities, you know, mm -hmm. teleport, teleporting, um, transformation, may maybe yeah. so maybe some blood magic because the most infamous spell is dark metamorphosis. Yep. Um, that's what that's what I'm thinking for this. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see here. Um, I would say that a few that would um, definitely suit Alucard in terms of the skill spheres. Um, survivalism is probably my number one pick because mm -hmm. it's all about collecting loot from enemies and turning it into usable equipment. Mm -hmm. And Castlevania as a Metroidvania is definitely all about looting. And mm -hmm. crafting to a degree. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in regards to in, re in regards to the um the more vamp the more vampiric abilities that he that he has. How would you ha how would you handle that? Crimson Dancer is kind of the obvious choice because that class was effectively made to be a vampire. Say again. Um, Crimson Dancer. Yeah. This um, one, a very recent champion class mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that released. Yeah, it has a lot of abilities based on blood manipulation, based on. Movement on the battlefield of turning into other things and using that to your advantage, and especially inflicting a whole bunch of nasty debuffs on enemies. And I do think that it would be a great fit for Alucard, with maybe a few dips in things like the Warp Sphere and the Alteration Sphere to facilitate some of his other abilities. Yeah, and then just uh, setting aside a couple of your regular progression talents to pick up like some of the survivalism stuff. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. So, I wanted to do a. I wanted to. I knew I wanted to do some sort of summoner affiliated um, archetype. And fortunately, somebody picked one that I can utilize in the form of Sieg Varheit from Chaos Legion. The key, th the key thing with him is that there's a type of monster that he that he's able to summon known as legions and fight and fight alongside al as his se as essentially his secondary weapon. And there's a handful of different types. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the that starts off with a fairly obvious. Um, Sphere parallel, what with the Conjuration Sphere. It's all about building characters along those lines. Yeah. And there are definitely examples of several different archetypes. For example, um, <sighs> there, there's an, uh, um, the Thaumaturge and the Armorist both have specific archetypes that are dedicated to having different abilities tied to different summons that you can switch in and out at different um, at at will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I forget. Uh, Antiquarian Armager doesn't stack with Awakener, right? I think they both touch some of the same features, because if they do stack, I think that might be another way you could go with it. I'm checking right now. Yeah, I, I would, but my net is going crazy right now. Mm. It's almost like these Sorry. where I'm glad you guys have a wiki. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, then... Antiquarian and Awakener sadly both replace Rapid Assault. Unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Redmill does a really good job keeping the wiki maintained. It's such a good resource. James has been... He's been so good about it. Mm -hmm. Our job would be damn near impossible without mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, the quality of the work would be significantly worse. Yeah. From trying to trawl through every single like actual book and looking for interactions, as opposed to just kind of a quick glance, would be significantly harder. Yeah. In the design aspect of things. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. But in. Go ahead. Um, but as for the skill side of things, uh, I think there are several different routes that could be taken here. Spell hacking for um, basically manipulation of magic and the um, and the alteration of um, spell effects, or faction f to represent the fact that you have special connections with um, alien powers and can call upon them for aid at different times. Yeah, I'd say between those um, faction, I think would I think would work a bit better. Mm -hmm. Also, communication. For um, like actually being able to like coordinate and strategize with like alien presences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so next is is one that uh, is one that's of course that's making quite the rounds these days. Um, Tanjiro Kamado from Demon Slayer. So, Magic Sword Boy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let's see here. Uh, I mean, on the martial line, he's definitely going to be grabbing, uh, I think, probably fencing a duelist for mm -hmm. the various parries and mobility options because yeah. fights in Demon Slayer are, very, are all over the place. Especially mm -hmm. since there's, there's a couple forms in water breathing that. Yeah. Are that are very reliant on footwork. Yeah. Actually, I'm looking at the breathing abilities, and my thought is this is a very good representation representation of the body control sphere because a lot of the stuff that he does with it, like trying to like strengthen muscles around broken um, broken bones or heal injuries or like basically like empower himself mm -hmm. by breathing. Um, these are a lot of the same fantasies that we've been trying to capture with body control. Would there... Um, now, with... With that kind of thing in, with that kind of thing in mind, mm -hmm. the... The template that I'd, that I'd kind of used is, was, um... Was... Right... A, was at the, at the point where he's dipped into the Dance of the Fire God. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm curious if if you think that if you think the inclusion of that would ch would change the sphere allocations all that much. Uh, I haven't. Um, I haven't actually got um gotten that far. So could you provide a reference? Um, because most of most of his most of his most of his breathing techniques are in the wa are in the water element. Mm -hmm. Which is which is emphasized by a lot of the movement that it, that's done. Yeah. Um. But the the fire god the fire god which was later revealed to be something else, but I don't want to spoil that just yet. Mm -hmm. Um. A lot. Um. Can a lot. The key thing that it can allow someone to do is. No matter how no matter how long they move no matter how long they move they can they don't exhaust themselves. Well, let's see. Um, that's, again, more body, body control body stuff control. certainly. Yeah. Um, though, actually, I think another one that might be worth looking into there is the navigation sphere with the acclimate ability. 
Um, not so much pathing, but um, using acclimate to like ins insulate yourself against environmental effects fatigue is definitely something I would see as up his alley. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you've mentioned you've mentioned classes in a few of these. What cl what class or or class or class and archetype would you go with? Hmm. Well, so he's definitely even like. I would think I'd put I'd put him in full BAB somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like he definitely strikes me as a mage knight, or um, given that a lot of his stuff is based on, um, essentially just like augmenting his existing martial abilities with magic rather than using magic as something separate. So, mm -hmm. martial mage knight um, with like heavy investment in body control sphere, or alternatively. Um, Possibly, um, actually, Rude Singer Fighter could work really well. Um, you hear me out here? What about Kung Fu Exemplar Bard? Oh, oh, I... That's a really good point. Because um, you've got the key powers that yeah. pull from a lot of the same thematic area that Demon Slayer does. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the f basically full BAB because of Exemplar Strike. You've yeah, got you've... The, the Gishy bits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've got plenty of talents to do it with. Yeah, I think that's a great game. idea. All right, I can I can go with that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Next, if you'll if you'll allow me to pursue if you'll allow me to indulge a meme, um, do not pursue Lu Bu. From Dynasty Warriors? Yes, I'm using the Dynasty Warriors example uh, in this. Hmm. One sec, I gotta see this video quick. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Do you want to explain... Um, like what aspects of this in particular um, you um, are? It's the, just I the want, fact that this guy's seemingly invulnerable. I wanted to go. I wanted to go with um, with a with a with a. I wanted at least one example of a very marsh of a very um, martial centric bi centric build instead of something a bit more gishy like some of the previous ones we've done so far. Mm -hmm. Um. And the key thing with him is he's no he's known for he's known for he's known for his spear use he's known for mm -hmm. charging in on his horse red hair, um, uh -huh. and for the fact that his reputation precedes him to the point where he is just passively intimidating. Communication sphere definitely. Um, a lot of the stuff in faction and communication is built around establishing and manipulating your reputation. And there are a number of plans that you can utilize in both spheres that can say like, okay, I've taken time in advance to make sure that these people have heard of me and have a, um, I guess like a certain disposition before we've even arrived. Um, there's also, um, there's actually a, ca a samurai archetype that is, currently being worked on by Brad that is built around establishing a reputation for yourself mm -hmm. and essentially like everywhere you go like people will like recognize your story as a warrior and you'll be um and you'll be able to leverage that for various influences the envoy class is built on that as well so um i envoy multi class build is another option mhm mm mhm mm Oh. So next is one that somebody's probably beaten me to the punch on this, but John Preston from Equilibrium. Mm, oh yeah, um, the Christian Bale's character. Yes. Just that. Just that whole use of gunkata. Well, that's funny you mention that because there's actually some stuff in the equipment sphere specifically for gun kata. Um, and there's actually an agent archetype that seems to be pretty fitting for this. Um, 
the agent class is definitely designed on, um, as I've mentioned, it's basically the Agent 47 class, but mm -hmm. there is definite, um, there is an archetype that's built around more dramatic gunplay. Um, another class that I would consider looking into for John Preston is the, um, what's it called? Oh yeah, Black Powder Brawler Striker archetype, because that one is much more about using guns in a like dramatic, strategic, and combo-oriented manner. Yeah. Um, a less a lesser element that he has is being able to being able to have a good sense of of some of someone's feelings. Mm -hmm. Um. Which I'm guessing yeah. would I'm guessing would be in communication. Uh, I would say study would be more accurate because um, that one is based around reading people more so than getting to them, mm -hmm. and also a lot of the gun kata in Equilibrium is very much in line with um, stuff like perspicacious dodge and some of the other edge talents in the study sphere. I could absolutely see him being a striker who invests heavily in the study sphere to the point where, like, any environment he can need make the necessary checks to effectively be untouchable. All right. Mm -hmm. So, taking take shifting over into uh, in, into fi into something Final Fantasy related. Um, I had I I had thought about whether or not I'd go with. Whether or not I'd go with a representative from seven or eight, but um, I think everybody and their mother has done has done something with seven, so I'm going to do something with eight instead. How would you handle um, Squall Leonhart? First thing that needs to be done is the gunblade, mm -hmm. and for that, I think Armager is a shoe in because they already have an archetype that's based around you building some sort of wild customized weapon that allows you to do a whole bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. Um, that being the battle, um, the battlefield tinker. Yeah. Um, I believe battlefield tinker is compatible with antiquarian. So you could use his um, magical abilities with that as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be using his, I'm going to be using his setup in the Dissidia games as a base for this so a lot so a lot of his so any magic ability that he'd have is largely going to be lightning and ice. Mhm. Mm Invest heavily in the destruction sphere, possibly nature as well. Yeah, I believe I'm back. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. nature would definitely be a big pick here. Um So uh what exactly does he do with uh ice and the other element that you mentioned it kind of cut out for me. The me Paramagic in FF8 is all is all about junctioning to these beings known as guardian forces, mm -hmm. um, using that using that to be to be able to draw to be able to draw magic or to in, or to enhance one's abilities. Um, in in the case of FF8, you, the reason why he's using lightning and ice is because the first two guardian forces you get right out of the gate right is. Um, is Quetzalcoatl, who is lightning elemented, and Shiva, who is Shiva. I don't need to go any more mm -hmm. further than that. Mm -hmm. I guess if you want to go for like more of the meta side with um, JRPG um, JRPG protagonist being able to. I guess either talk their way through a lot of situations or recruit people or other things with the power of friendship communication sphere is a good place for a lot of that um and i could absolutely see rapport being used to create like deeper party dynamics and reflecting like training together or like my passion for my friends keeps me strong um the uh, i'd say i'd say the only the only angle that that i ha that hasn't been tackled is the fact that he doesn't tr he you don't use MP in eight. Instead, you have char instead you have charges that's either drawn from the environment or for, or from enemies using the draw command. Mm -hmm. So, how would you factor something like that in? Would that would that fall into the purview of 
um, casting tradition. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, there are a few dra- there are a few drawback feats and casting traditions that um, definitely make me think of that. Mm-hmm. Um, terrain casting is probably the most obvious one um, because it's a it generally requires either taking extra time to draw magic from an environment or risking damaging the environment every time you cast. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, um, I believe there is... Um, oh yeah, environment charge. Um, allows you to um, store that energy for later if you possess the charged spells drawback, which is another thing that I think is kind of suitable for this character. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Next as is one... Draw- oh, go. Um, as for drawing from enemies, um, there's another drawback feat um, that is... Soul Harvester, which is exactly that. But anyway, go on. Yeah. Now, next is one that I um, I initially I, when I spoke when I first spoke with Adam during the first time I inter- I interviewed your team, um, mm-hmm. I had asked this with him during the crowdfund for the um, fifth edition version, but yep. I didn't have but Spheres of Guile wasn't a, wasn't a thing at the time. So mm-hmm. um, so this is going to be a second opinion instance. Edward Elric. Hmm. Who boy. We have a lot of things nowadays uh, as far as, like, sphere yeah. is concerned for replicating FMA-style alchemy. Yeah, um, absolutely the creation sphere would be a major, um, would be a major focus for this. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, the, uh, feeds, like, before creation comes destruction or whatever. Yeah. Um, and also the material casting drawback so that he needs to be touching something in order to transmute it. Yeah, uh, well, I guess for him specifically, I guess diagram casting's not really... Uh... No. Yeah. I mean, for some of the other FMA characters, absolutely. Um, but not Edward. Mm-hmm. Um, um. Or I think the big contributions that um, would um, bring about Edward, um, that would that Edward would possess from Spheres of Guile would probably be the Artifice Sphere because it's built around um, modifying ex- um, modifying or building objects, mm-hmm. which we know Ed has a tendency to do. And um, also the Faction Sphere to represent all of the pull that he has as a state alchemist. Mm-hmm. Very true. Mm-hmm. And actually, minor aside here, but... Um... There's probably in the champion content that we're doing. There's probably room for like a creation artifice, like uh, champion feat. Might be an interesting route to go with things. Um, if you'll excuse me, I need to add that to my notes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, just because like using alter to like uh, do like artifice stuff on the fly, I think it'd be pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but the the fact that you, the fact that you guys aren't hurting for choice on that on that matter is, um something that speaks volumes now the next one that i have is a bit of is a bit of a deep cut Mm -hmm. that being rion from the galarians duology how's the name spelled um r-i-o-n and rion is a psychic one who Mm -hmm. one who is able to utilize psychic um powers after injecting himself with what's known as PPECs or sci- or psychic power enhancement chemicals, mm-hmm. um, there are between the orig- between the original game and the sequel there are um, fu- there are a small ha- a small handful of of them. Nalcon, which is basically a mental bullet, um, Red, mm-hmm. which is pyrokinesis, Defelon, yeah. which is telekinesis. Um, Bustanor, which is a homing energy projectile, and Breakeron, which is electrokinesis. The key thing with it is, ev- is um, every time psionic powers are used, he bu- he builds TP threshold points. Mm-hmm. If these cap out, that's referred to as shorting, where he does a lot of damage to everything around him, but he also but his health also drains. Um, and that can be that can be mitigated with an item called Delmator. 
Thaumaturge, absolutely. This, um, the Thaumaturge is absolutely, um, is, I think, the perfect example of I use a lot of really powerful magic until something goes wrong and I take a serious backlash. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Soulfire Master would be particularly effective at this, given that it is all about um, essentially like draining your own health in order to fuel your magic. He does, whenever he's used, whenever he's using um, a a um, psychic effect, it doesn't it doesn't drain. But the the use of PPE seeds could be considered the ammo for that effect. Yeah, no, that's um, that's kind of what Soulfire Ma that what a lot of the thaumaturges do. They don't drain with every effect, but um, every time they cast a spell, there's a cumulative chance of something going horribly wrong. So you're fine until the exact moment that you're not. All right. And for the drug consumptions, um, the experimentalist archetype is actually perfect for that because it is all about um essentially using like drugs to enhance your abilities and pushing yourself until you like hit some sort of dangerous threshold. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so, so go oh go ahead. That's that's my take at least. Yeah. Um next is and it is an entry from one of one of the hidden gems within Tokusats that some people recently got got a taste of when it ventured over into anime. That being um si that being Koga Saijima from Garo. Which is another that could be considered a magic sortie boy. Um but there's one there's one key difference. Um putting aside the fact that he utilizes his sword and a, and a fair amount of tools to mm -hmm. de to deal with the demons that he ends up fighting. Yeah. The crux of the crux of his abilities is is being able to summon the titular um, Garo armor that's made that's made of soul metal. It's mm -hmm. soul metal is rooted in what in one's will, and yeah. it is very powerful. It's basically the main thing that can cut down horrors. Yeah. The catch is you can only safely wear it for ninety nine seconds. Before you turn into what's known as a lost beast, I think that um, Armorist is. I know I've mentioned Armorist a lot, but mm -hmm. this is perfect for him. It's all. It's a class all about summoning armor and weaponry and getting progressively stronger with it. Mm -hmm. um, as for the danger aspect of keeping it up, um, I think that. Um, that would be best handled through casting tradition, and uh, the the one that comes to um, my mind first would be what's is it unsettling casting, which essentially like takes the longer you're in it, the um, more you start to dissociate from reality, and you start taking like cumulative effects that can be pretty nasty after a while um also this may be a good time i did do a lot of revisions of that system in the um aberration bestiary so it's been updated in a few ways mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so next is one next is one that um a dear friend of mine want i knew wanted me i knew wanted me to tackle and that is um, Sakai Jin from Ghost of Tsushima. The main character? Yes. Hmm. Um. It is it is very much on the sorty boy end of things, but you have two mm -hmm. angles: the samurai angle, which is a lot of his stance fighting, stance fighting yeah. that's built around countering certain t certain enemy types, as well as yeah. his use of archery, and mm -hmm. the ghost, which is all which is all which is oh. very ninja leaning. Yeah. Okay. This is the first. 
I am glad that, like, for the first time here, I'm actually able to talk about the subterfuge and infiltration spheres. Because those are absolutely elements yeah. that a sneaky ninja type character would have. Um, the subterfuge sphere is all about um, being in disguise, being able to gather information, being able to, like, pickpocket people, um, those sorts of things. And... Mm -hmm more or less being able to sow confusion in the ranks while never actually being detected. Meanwhile, the infiltration sphere is all about um, never being seen at all. Um, about, like, hiding in various ways um, of, like, utilizing placement and environment in ways that can keep you hidden from other people and also setting traps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When it comes to his stance, when it comes to his um, stance fighting, stance dancing, as my friend calls it, um, yeah, how would you ha how would you handle that? Well, uh, there are actually no a number of stance mechanics that exist in spheres of might um, in spheres of might already. Um, the armager class and um, the stance master monk very um, um, monk ar archetype are both examples of this master of many stances, as it's called. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I, I, in a more subtle way, there are a number of talents called stances in pretty much all of the spheres at this point that each allow for um, a character to like assume a unique stance and gain different benefits from it passively, mm -hmm. so long as they're spending the resources to keep it up. For a character that's focused on parrying and countering, I would heavily recommend the Duelist Sphere because that um, has a number of gimmicks that are focused around that, and also the Fencing Sphere for parry and repost. Mm -hmm. yep. And then, I mean, even also like boxing sphere too, uh, with some of the drawbacks to make it work with weapons. I oh, I forgot all about boxing. Everyone does. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, so, next would be from the, from the anime Kakaishi, um, Yoshimori Sumimura. Um, and one of the big reasons I want I I I let this one stay stay in there is mm -hmm. because of the use of barrier magic. That's that's the that is the general gist of of his of his casting abilities. It's all about creating mm -hmm. all about creating um bar barriers and traps. Mhm. Mm well, for magic, um the protection sphere is certainly the obvious one. Um, a lot of stuff for personal shields and also for environment shields that can either negate um, that can either negate specific effects or allow the person to power through mm -hmm. certain um certain dangers. Yeah. Uh, how like consistent are his barriers? Are they something that are up like all the time, or is it like uh like a, I reactively do these type of thing? Um. It's it's not when when it's up it's not a, it's not up permanently it's something that he has to maintain. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was just wondering here if like a uh, lattice weaver and canter subspec would be something. Possibly. Um, actually, my thought was hedge witch. Um, particularly with the um, that one mystery focused on wards. Okay. Uh, so how much of like a martial bend does this guy have? He has some, he has some mar he has some martial training, and you look at it if you were to look at his design, it would it would look not too far not too far removed from a um from a from the kind of garb that a Zen Buddhist would wear, inclu including mm -hmm. having the um including having a st a um. And it, it's more of, it's more of a spear in his case, but it's not too far removed from a monk's shakujo, the um, mm -hmm. uh, the metal the metal tipped staffs that um, Buddhists would wear would use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I um I'm looking through a, a lot of his stuff. I do think that um. Both the environment stuff and the um, personal defensive abilities like lend themselves very well to the protection sphere, mm -hmm. 
And also there are a number of abilities that seem to be divination based as well, what with um like connection to spirits and enhanced sensory abilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, some boxing read the flow stuff. Yeah. And definitely some healing stuff as well to like prevent conditions even though they're already going on. Yeah. Uh, would that be in the in the vein of healing or maybe more in the vein of like Guardian Sphere delayed uh, like Cold Iron Call Durable? Actually Cold Iron Call and Durable, that could be um an interesting way of that could be another direction to take this character. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, like, um, a lot of it, um, the, pl the gameplay would be somewhat different, but um, I it would absolutely um, fulfill the fantasy of being able to, like, shrug off or ward against pretty much any threat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the two are not, like, mutually exclusive either, because, like, one of the big strengths, obviously, of Cold Iron Call and Durable is curing the condition before you get affected by it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, heck, there might... are archetypes that's ba that are based around combining Guardian with the Protection Sphere. Um, there's one for Mage Knight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or heck, you could go all the way and play the uh, Warden class, which is all about defenses. This is true. He does sound very Warden y. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, uh, the next one, the next one on the on the list is Shoto Todoroki from My Hero Academia. One of my players... Actually, funny story about that. Um, a while back, um, one of my players said, hey, I want to play Shoto Todoroki in Spheres of Power. How do I do it? Um, and I directed them immediately to the Elementalist class because it does exactly what um, the player set out to accomplish. Yeah, you just grab, like, fire, fire, ice as your first favorite element, grab the other as your second, depending on which one you want to yeah. focus Destruction on. Destruction Sphere, Nature Sphere, pour everything into fire and cold-based packages, profit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Which actually, um, you might, isn't there a, there's a nature-based elementalist archetype, right? There is. Yeah, actually, there's a whole, like, there's, like, the slew of them. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one that, like, bumps your CL with it, right? Uh, that what? Yeah, um, nature, um, uh, nature warrior, natural warrior. Yeah. yeah so you'd go like na natural warrior, grab like the water and fire packages, focus on like mm -hmm. the icy stuff from. Wait, water. my bad. Geomancer is the name. Natural uh, warrior is the um a different one. Uh, grab that, and then I, you just like you're still uh like three force caster. You can do like the CL fixers for destruction, mm -hmm. for like the fire and ice type blast groups, and I think that would probably be the better way of doing it. Yeah. Than like base elementalist. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, like, the player in my case like stuff. took a, um took the nature sphere stuff and then promptly ignored it in favor of using destructive blast in every possible situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A small critique of the nature sphere. At least, uh, you really have to get kind of creative with it to mm -hmm. make it make it really yeah. do wonders for you, and you can make it do wonders for you. Absolutely. But... Uh, that's it's a lot of mental overhead with the creativity end of it versus like a handful of d sixes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So next, going into an going into another one that that I'm sure you're familiar, you guys are familiar with. Um, Travis touchdown. Oh hell yes. So a whole lot a whole lot of swordsmanship with that beam sword and a whole lot of wrestling. Mm-hmm. First thing that comes to my mind, wrestling sphere. Um, you know? Who oh, would have thought? Yeah, re yeah, wrestling sphere focused, um, and also, um, you um, while utilizing either one or two beam katanas, um, there is actually a magic weapon that allows, um, there's actually a magic weapon property that allows a character to effectively duplicate a beam katana. Um, yeah, uh, what is it, Plasma Blade, right? Yeah, plasma blade. Um, and I would say that um, in addition to um, a heavy use of combos, which I would say like would probably um, push him towards prodigy 
arguably. Or striker. Or striker. Or striker. Um, I would think that um, something else that could be included is Alteration Sphere because he turns into a tiger. Actually, about True. that, how would you in it, how would you integrate the slot machine mechanic that ha that um happens during kills? Hmm. That would I would pro I would probably say that'd be a casting tradition thing. Um. But um. There is actually um. The funny part is there is a class that I'm working on for the champions book that does have a little bit of a similar mechanic at its heart. So me, like it definitely does not fit Travis touchdown in terms of um like the aesthetic of it unless you want to really stretch it, but I think that maybe I'm going to write down the ability to dip into the like random number generation mechanic um for other characters. Um, alternatively, you could um, do it with Thaumaturge levels. Um, or, actually, uh, there is a Thaumaturge archetype that hopefully is going to be released later on that um, actually does have a gambling mechanic built into it. So, mm -hmm. we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. So... Next is the next one that I had. The next one that I have is um, Grid from o from the Overgeared um, webtoon. But mm -hmm. if I'm but if I'm on if I'm honest, a lot of this a lot of the stuff that's that's um that I had for my notes would already be would already be kind of covered by um what we mentioned with Sieg. Mm -hmm. So I'm sk so I'm skipping him. Yeah. Fair enough. Um instead I want to go with Jen from Primal whose primary motif is being a shapeshifter. Shifter class. Yeah. There's shifter. a whole class based on being a shapeshifter. Yeah. Which uh so I actually I haven't seen Primal but from what I understand about it it's it's basically a bunch of like cavemen fucking around. And doing stuff, right? Um, I, think, no. I think there are there's a number of different things called. Pro this is the PlayStation Two game, I believe you're referring to. Okay. Yes. I was thinking of the Tartakovsky animation. That is a good show. Good show, yeah. but not the focus here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, well, then I, I rescind my previous statement. Mm hmm. So yeah, shift um, shifter. Um, Shifter and possibly um, Destruction Sphere as well to accommodate a lot of the um, elemental abilities that she uses. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, the Electric Whips, the Flame Blades, the Enhanced Claws, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So next is Crow Bronwen from Ruby. Ooh, warp, warp. Lots of warp. Uh, they have space fallen talents. really far behind on that show. Oh, I don't want to get into the the Ruby discussion. I'll we'll, I'll be talking for hours. <laughs> Mostly Let's, negative. Um, the so the warp thing I th I'd say I'd say that covers the whole the especially the whole thing with the bird. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh... the other factors that I think I think should be factored in is the shotgun slash scythe harbinger, as mm -hmm. well as his misfortune um, semblance. Well, let's oh see. wait! Oh God! Sorry, Crow, not Raven. That's that's where I was with Warp. Sorry, yeah. uh, Crow's definitely he's got the transformation feat for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he doesn't really do shape shifting. He turns into one form and back to another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, weapon wise, for the misfortune feat. Um, I would say the fate fates the fate sphere is probably the easiest way to accomplish that. Um, and this is yet another case where I'm suggesting if you're using a combined weapon, um, armature. Um, could be uh, armager. Well, actually, he could be th uh, theoretically armager. Uh, technician with the integrated weapon options is very. I didn't think about technician. 
Yeah, like everybody in Ruby is like just all to check technician. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because like the integrated weapon of like it's also a gun is very much how that class operates with a lot of its improvements. Yeah. Um. Misfortune. Yeah. Uh, like him having a little bit of like fate casting that mm -hmm. he just like keeps up all the time. Yeah. To be fair, that's how most fate casters do it. They just do their best to keep at least one, um, um at least one of the um, passive talents up at all time. Yeah. Um, and now, I'm gonna take this at another angle. Barm sphere, grabbing a couple of like drunk talents because the man is an iron stomach or iron liver and drinks all the time. What sphere? I'm sure. Bar room. Specifically, le like, leaning on the drunk talents. Mm -hmm. This is why he's not a guy that, like, drinks in combat. There is, like, from, uh, there's some, like, stuff like Booze Hound and the like that might kind of mm -hmm. play into him. Yeah. Yeah, I could see, I could see it. Um. So, next would be the Dragon of Dojima. Um. Kazuma Kiryu from Yakuza or Ryuga Gotoku, if you're full weeb. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. This is another unarmed fighter um, character, so I would suggest um, absolutely the open hand wrestling and possibly boxing spheres. Uh, also, um, Barum, because he has a long history of just whacking people with stuff. Barum, definitely. Um yeah, for uh, skill spheres, um, I've brought up faction and communication too many times by this point. Um, bluster could be interesting, basically using like biting remarks in order to like agitate people. Um, but I'm tempted to just go with the meme and de give him at least something in the performance sphere <laughs> because of all of the singing. Yeah, but it's Wednesday, not Friday night. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. let's see next I, would be um you know speak since since we were talking yeah. about we were talking about um games made by Miyazaki earlier in the show yeah. may as well bring up another one and mm -hmm. this time I'd, I'd like to go with um Ishin Ashina from Sekiro yeah would you be Let's able see. to field this one because I am I am definitely like pushing into hangry territory at this point <laughs> and yeah um uh, I, I can tr I can try it um, yeah would it be okay if I step out now go yeah go ahead thank you so much um and thank you so much for having me on the show it was lovely mm -hmm. just me being yeah. able to gush about like odd spheres of power abilities for so long <laughs> That yeah. was that's the that was the plan with this. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'll yeah. be seeing y'all. All right, yep. see ya. Um, so I will point out, Sekiro is the only Souls like I haven't played, so you have to give me a minute to go hop on the wiki for him. So, Ishin, especially especially in the especially when you fight when you um fight him at the end, is referred to as the is referred to as a sword saint, someone who's swordsmanship skill is bordering on the supernatural um okay when you end up fight when you end up fighting him he is essentially a far more advanced fight from hit from his grandson and there's a whole lot of uses of a he starts out using a katana and a spear and then later on um uses a uses a um rifle to in the same way that his that his descendant used a bow, you know, so as well as um, using the lightning of Tomoe, so it's basically one giant test of all this of all the rhythm skills that you've had built up up to that point. Okay, um, so we're definitely looking like at some dual wielding options, specifically the ones that are letting you like dual wield melee and ranged weapons. I would think. Mm -hmm. So, dual wield sphere is a must here. Um, from what I understand of Sekiro, I know it's basically, oh yeah, it's like a rhythm game. All the bosses are pretty mobile, right? Uh, 
They can they can be, but it's more about but it's less about mobility and dodging about the way you would in a Souls game, and more about um, breaking their guard, which is the reason okay. why the posture mechanic was introduced into that game. Mm -hmm. Since it's all since so, you're um, constantly attacking, parrying, and dodging, and to try and to try and break their guard while making sure they don't hit you. All right. Um. So then, I would actually argue if you want to replicate that as kind of a counterplay mechanic, because uh, I see this more as like maybe you're writing this as a GM than as a player. There's actually some jank you can do with this uh, shield sphere. Um across using gauntlet shield to use a uh, gauntlet as your shield. Just, mm -hmm. This just gets rid of the shield, then grabbing the charge post talent, which lets you like do shield bashes with a one-handed weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, grabbing that plus gauntlet shield, and then using lots of active defense options, which means that now you have a resource that can be attritioned, that can kind of be likened to posture, because once that's down, you now lose a decent amount of your defensive ability. Um, kind of leads into that very like active rhythm gamey back and forth stuff of your opponent of like trying to wear down someone's defenses and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, not as much of a mechanic that matters if you're playing this as a PC build, but like if we want to kind of try and translate the mechanics, I think that's how I would do it. Um, giving him some fencing and duelist stuff, just because that's kind of the anime sword boy, which makes sense. Um, speaking of sword boy, let's get, let's get a little bit ridiculous with this, with the sword boys, if you don't mind. Um, how would you handle Masamune Date from Sengoku Basara? When his net, when the net gets back up. Hold on a moment, folks. Technology is sometimes not our friend. And we're back. Sorry about that. Um, this will be the last one for this will be the last one for the for the knights because of technology giving us the middle finger. All right. So Masamune Data. Mm -hmm. Let's Which, see. If you've the Sengoku Basara games are a fascinating in, entry. They're not too far removed from a Dynasty Warriors game. Just just amping up the crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I am not 100% sure how I represent him using all six weapons at once, outside of, like, uh, maybe three sword style and a lot of, like, fluff, fluffing that. Uh, just getting at least, like, some of the, I'm using a bunch of weapons at once mm -hmm. bits out of there. Um... Let's see. I'm I'm looking at his wiki page right now to see like what he has in the way of abilities outside of just wielding lots of swords. Um, there is the fact that he that there's a fair amount of lightning alignment in his in his stuff. Is it more like uh like lightning based like melee attacks or is he like hurling lightning bolts? The former. Former. Um, I mean, an energy striking like destruction bit is uh is definitely in the cards there mm -hmm. if you wanted to go like a little bit crazier there might be some like 
enhancement options where you just uh, drop the uh, what's it called energy enhancement on all your weapons so they're all doing like d6 plus one per two cl mm-hmm. just uh you know adding lots of lightning damage arcing everything across all your uh, stuff uh that depends on like obviously how you're at, you want your action economy to line up and all that stuff mm-hmm. uh as for class given that he is from like just from what i'm reading on the wiki about it very much seem, feels like a like a style fighter type game now Mm-hmm. Uh, I would definitely have to go for uh, Striker there. And uh, taking uh, some of the options that let you use like manufactured weapons over unarmed stuff. And just going with that, building your tension, setting off, like building up your combos and executing them feels very like on theme here. Mm-hmm. Uh, well... Like, like I said, that's going to be the last one for now. We'll probably in, we'll probably do a part two of this a little a little ways down the road. But mm-hmm. I'd but I'd say we got a good amount of headway because I because I only had one two three four five six seven eight um, remaining. Yeah. So. Um, but um. But I'm. Yeah. But, so we made down like what like ten today. I think we get we got quite we got quite a few. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty one we got done today. Okay. So we'll we'll likely end up doing a part two covering covering the rest of them. Um, it's just that techno- just that one guy's down due to hangriness and the other one is um dealing with tech dealing with the technological equivalent of a dice roll. <laughs> Ironic. Yeah. yeah. It's also you know we've uh, we've gotten pretty lucky. My net is in general pretty bad. The last uh two interviews we've done I've been uh in a pretty good spot. Mm-hmm. So it was bound to happen eventually. Mm-hmm. But um, with Oh, go go ahead. No, no, I was about to ask you uh, what your plans for closing out were, but it sounds oh. like you already got it. Yeah. But with that said, I'd like to sincerely thank both of you for being willing to come back for this little experiment, I'll, and I look forward to finishing up the rest of the list a little ways down the road. Mm-hmm. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, Stay fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>